I've got a question for you. Lay it on what, me. What on earth happened after last week's podcast? Because, look, my phone, I get a little bit tired after we record these. Because we do yep. them at night time. Both family men, kids mm-hmm. at home, so we make our wives put our kids to bed and then we, we come and do this. But I was getting text messages from you from very, very late at night. What happened? I, go, I gave you a call when I tried to get some assistance with my car because um, – so what happens after an episode, if you want to get into the nuts and the bolts yeah, of it, sure, sure. Um, we have quite big files on a hard drive. Mm. And, you, you know, years ago, I used to just take them home, edit it up, but now we have help. Indy's come along. She's going to help us get state, social videos up. State champion. State champ. Um, didn't bring the medal in. Anyways. We will, we will get into that in we'll another get episode. We have a state champion working on the podcast. And we're not talking about me winning the state under nine hurdles. We're talking a real state champion. Should we talk about the No. Um, <laughs> so I thought in my head, I thought instead of transferring, you know, 40 to 50 gigs of data online where it could take hours, yes. I'll drive the hard drive to Indy's house. Yeah. 15 minutes, 10 minute transfer, drive home. Instead drove there and then um, after the transfer finished, my car died, the battery in my car. It's a newish car. Okay. 2018. So you rang me. Yep. What, 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 what was I going... What on earth would I do with... The, like, I don't know anything about cars. Yeah, I know. Even if I did, what yeah. would I do to help you? Well, so first first thought was, I'll get the car jump-started with some jumper cables. But who, me? Yeah. What, what makes you think I would have jumper cables? Well, to be honest, I didn't think you would. Do but you I, have them? No. Charlie, do you have jump leads? Yeah, I, I do have a set of jump leads. <laughs> <Yeah>, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh Charlie. my God, you should have run Charlie. Indy, Who would have thought? Indy didn't have them at her house. And so <laughs> I thought, well, I know Will's up because it was only 15 minutes ago that I left his house. I'm tired, sorry. You were tired. I call you. You didn't even know what a car was at that point. I still don't. You still don't. I'm not very, very good with cars. Uh, Indy drove me around to various petrol stations, bought jumper leads. You're kidding me. Um, I even actually ran into some police officers at one of the petrol stations and oh, I said, excuse say, me. Sorry, officers, I'm, I'm abiding every law that you've ever said. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, please don't, don't arrest me. I said, excuse me, um, my car's broken down. Would you mind jump starting um, my car? And they said, um, he goes, oh, mate, the amount of computers and stuff that's going on underneath the bonnet of the police cars, like we're not allowed to jump start cars. I don't even have jumper leads. Why would the cops jump start you? They're there to protect and serve, you know, like just help me out. How is your list going? How about ring the fucking people that... Do this. Yes. Okay. Eventually, I did call them three hour wait. This is the RAC. RAC. Not three RAC. hour wait. We can say brands. RAC. <laughs> Called the RAC. Three hour wait. Um, they put me onto Honda. It's a, the car I have is a Honda. Um, three hours later, I'm like lying down in my car, like half asleep, and <laughs> some gentleman just rocks up, replaces why? my battery. Why was it? Why did it take so long? Peak hour is it? 10 o'clock at night. 10 30 or something. And this, is, this is at 1 a.m. You're, at 1 you're getting it. Yeah, eventually, the, maybe 1 1 30, the guy rocks up, changed my battery, and I drive home. So I could have, the, the transfer could have been well and truly done if I just did it online. I thought, <laughs> let's save some time. There was pizza here. We're all eating pizza, right? And I was like, all right, I've got to go. I had, I smashed three pieces of pizza. You've seen me eat pizza. So I can what, eat what lesson have we learned? If we, had to, if we had to, yeah, people are listening to this. We aren't just talking to between. What, what's the lesson learned here? Um, Never trust your car. I don't know. I don't know what the lesson is. Or don't, I don't yeah, don't trust the police. No, I trust the police. <laughs> Definitely trust, trust the police. Trust the police. No, um, the, the, the police won't jump start your car. Is it call Charlie first? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> call Charlie go. first. Charlie. Has I also have a battery charger as well. Oh yeah. Done that. So, well, but okay. the thing is, that, well, I will say this. I will say this. Charlie. When the RAC arrived. I said, I, you know, I tried to jumpstart my car for for like half an hour. It just wouldn't ever work. And the guy was like, yeah, these new cars with the batteries, like you can't jumpstart them. You need like, a, you need either a special thing or a new battery. It sounds like a nice way to take some money off you from the RAC. Yeah, $135 or something. Okay, thanks for coming. Um, well, there you go. We got the episode out. It was a good one, Tom Barras. Expensive episode. Yeah, but it was good. We loved Worth it. it. Um, welcome to Back Chat. You're here. Welcome. Instagram, Twitter. YouTube, you know where to find us, backchat double underscore. TikTok. Oh, yeah, TikTok. We love TikTok. What's going on over there? YouTube, subscribe to YouTube if you haven't subscribed. Uh, starting to build a little bit of momentum over there. Well over 500 subscribers now. That's yep. starting to real. Zuckerberg is over there a little worried yeah. about the amount of numbers little coming zucky. through. It was lucky. Um, Indy's in the house today. As we said, um, state champion. 
Look, that wasn't the best thing she did over the weekend. She was our 100th subscriber on Patreon. Huge. Congratulations, Indy. She doesn't have a mic today, but we will bring a bit of that in, I think. I think we'll have some cameras and some mics back there. We promised that last week, but... We did try. Honestly, Charlie didn't set it up, so <laughs> that's why That's why it's not there. No, no. No, don't you know, unmute you don't, your mic. No, you don't get a reply for that, Charlie. You didn't set it up, and that's that's just what happened. Yep. You can email us at hello at backchatpodcast.com.au. You can find us at backchatpodcast.com.au. Um, can I just mention as well, mm. our email inbox, it's never looked better. The quality of emails that have been coming through, just unprecedented. It never Very has, good. It never has been quantity over quality. Like, it's never been like, yeah, oh, yeah, we've yeah. got 20 to get through this week. Mm. It's, it's really been a quality thing from the get-go. But over the last two to three weeks, mm-hmm. I, I a couple of emails that we will get to at the end of this episode, and yep. probably next week as well, are some of the most well-thought-out, time-consuming Yes. Thoughtful emails I've ever had, not just on this podcast. The last email I received that had that much, you know, time and effort put into it was from my ex girlfriend. <laughs> was it breaking she up? She emailed me. No, it was post breakup. She sent me a very long email explaining why it was a mistake. <laughs> uh, I've still got the email as well. It still is in my, e- um, <laughs> my okay, Gmail. If inbox. we could get that up on social media, <laughs> that would be just beautiful. Uh, no, it's not going up on social media, but okay. I still have held on to it. Well, there you go. So YouTube, you're going to sign up to that. Um, Patreon, that's uh, that's building. So as we said, yep. Indy was our 100th patron, um, mm. but that's over that mark now. You've got to be a patron to be in our fantasy league. Yeah. All right? So I will remind everyone who's listening, mm-hmm. whose friends are listening, if you're not a Patreon, if you're patron. not a patron, <laughs> I cannot ever get that right. I will never get that's that fine. right. Don't worry about it. If you're not a patron for the length of the season – and you win, you will not win. You'll come last. You will not win. You'll you will still lose to me. That's correct. And I'll be playing the whole time. And I'm not a. I'm not actually not a patron. I will. I will register this week. I don't think I am either. I probably should because I am in the league illegally. Mm. Well, well, we abide up. by the rules right. at this I'll podcast. I will sign up. I'll sign. I'll sign up to the top level too. <laughs> You're a cheapskate. Yeah, well, there's no rules. No, there isn't any rules. We love all the support we get out from our patrons. We really do. So sign up over there too. You can find that socials, link in bio on our Insta. Or you can jump on the website. It'll pop up there for you. Join the Fantasy League. Before we get to Fantasy, big thanks to Whippersnapper. Still the premium exclusive whiskey sponsors of this podcast. And you might notice... There's a little bit more of a smirk on our faces <laughs> <laughs> it's not this week. We're, we're, we're not drunk. We're not, we're, we don't no, no, but it's just we've leveled up with the upshot. Yeah, we're on the cast strength now. Yeah, what does that mean? It's a bit stronger, a very bit stronger. tasty. It is but, good, but it's just very good. Excellent. It is very good. Excellent. It's a snapper. They're in East Perth. Uh, good friends of the family here at Back Chat. Um, yep. We are enjoying it a little bit too much though because we are going through i mean not that you can do that but you can't enjoy something too much yeah i thought i'd just give a little shout out to them because they're always us. um on that talking about alcohol beers with back chat yes oh it's finally happening it's happening do we have any details for it no not yet <laughs> no let's let's be honest we like to be honest on this podcast we yep. don't have any information for you yet for our listeners for our watchers for our readers I wrote an article last week. You did? It was pretty good too. Yeah. Oh, no, it was very good. Was I liked it. I you sent it to me to have a look over and I was like, mate, very good. Send it off. So all of our consumers. Stop the presses. Get it in there. All of our consumers. It's bloody good content. Put it in. Beer with Back Chat is happening. It is. Um, we're trying to figure out a date. We're trying to figure out how we do it, what we yep. do it. You know, is that we want live guests? Do we want to... Live show? Do we want Charlie to pay for all the beers? <laughs> do we want Charlie That's, to do a magic trick? I'm going to have to start saving now. But You're in a bit of trouble, Charlie. Yeah, I, I will am. say, we put the poll up today. You are in a lot of trouble. It's going to be a bit financially rough. <laughs> yeah, it's okay though, mate. You're on the big bucks over here at Back Chat. So I think what does Joe start. Exotic say? I will never financially recover from this. Yes. From Good point. Yep. Good point. So, um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. What, what are you Tiger talking King. about? Tiger King. Never watched Joe, it. Uh, never watched it. Okay, that's right. right. So, beer and back chat will happen. Mm-hmm. Um, we just don't know when or how. Well, the or reason why. why we don't know is because we, we want to include people yeah. in the decision making process. So, get around it on socials. Uh, we'll put something up again next week and we'll figure it all out. It's going to be fun. Why are we wearing 
Why are we, why are we wearing this stuff? Um, it's Super Bowl week, wearing? baby. Yeah, Super Bowl. I mean, Bowl. you're wearing my T-shirt. If you're wondering why Dan looks like he's wearing his dad's T-shirt, because he is. <laughs> I'm literally wearing my dad's I'm, T-shirt. I'm your father. Um, I'm a I'm a Cowboys guy. Are you? So I, mean, I don't think I've asked you that. Oh, How did that asking happen? questions from time to time. Jerry Jones. Don't just assume. Yeah. Dak Prescott. Right. I'm a big Tony Romo guy. Are you? Yeah, he's not there anymore. Were, were. Yeah, it was. Um, but I love his commentary. If you ever hear him on the call, it's very good. But Cowboys guy, they uh, spilt the, uh, what do you call it? Proverbial bean. Oh, they spilled the beans? No, they didn't spill the beans. They dropped, they dropped the cat. I'm not sure what you're talking about. They could have won the game. They didn't. Which game? To get into the playoffs. Oh, right. It was awful. Yeah, they it was an awful spectacle. Yeah, this is, that's what the Cowboys do. They didn't. It's yeah, exactly they're, what they're, the Cowboys do. They're, but they're Vikings as well. Season. No, they're terrible too. Not around. Been terrible for a long time. But we're both wearing Vikings because I'm a Vikings guy. Yes. And you didn't bring NFL gear, so I'm giving But we do have a guy in the game That's this right. time round. That's right. Cam. Wait, what? No. We're backing Mr. Oh, sorry. Smoke and Joe. Boy, Smoke and Joe. Now, I, I, I want to I double back into this yep. Super Bowl, right? I just wanted to make people aware while we're... Like, I'm in an NFL jumper and you're wearing your dad's T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just wanted to let people know why that's happening. Back on fantasy, mm. you got to sign up to Patreon. You got to be a patron to join our fantasy league on afl.com.au. It's AFL Fantasy. I actually uh, did a AFL Fantasy draft, which is a bit different to what we're doing. I did it with the AFL traders last night. Um, you go well? Uh, look, at, uh, honestly, no. Okay. No, I didn't. Who was um, your first pick? Can you tell us that? Yeah, I had some strategy around it. I, I wanted to stay away from the midfielders. So just, just uh, I know, Kat, you're over there working away. This is not what we're doing on back chat. This is different. This is a this is a draft. So only okay. only one player gets Dusty Martin. Mm-hmm. Only one player gets Nat Fife. Not everyone can pick him. Of course. So I didn't want to get in the midfield. There's too much depth in the midfield. My first picks, I wanted to be I wanted to be one of the top three Ruckman. Mm. And I got that. And Charlie's okay. gonna be happy. Sean Darcy, my ooh, first pick. Ooh, yeah. A lot of hit outs. Yeah, so Gorn, Grundy, first gone in the first five picks. I picked seven, took Sean Darcy, and then I wanted a forward because that was the next least depth position. Yep. I took uh, Dunkley from Bulldogs. Yep. And then took a, another forward in Steel Sidebottom, I believe. And then I took Jaden Short from Richmond as a defender. So I didn't have a midfielder in the first four picks. Those first four were really good. Big tip. Legit question. Went downhill from there. Um, could Jack Darling be a sneaky pickup? Does anyone pick him up? Uh, I mean, one, he's not a good fantasy player. Okay. Um, and two, he currently is effectively not on the team. And That's I why. Maybe he's a sneaky no. little pickup. I mean, yeah, you'd be sneaking yourself, really, because he's just not a good fantasy player. He's a okay. position forward. They're just not. I mean, right. I mean, you're identifying the people that Dan's an easy beat. Because we <laughs> have no idea about fantasy. I mean, it'd be like saying yeah. he's picking Will Schofield up a sneaky... I have a chance to get on the COVID list, really. They're, they're building lists on the AFL teams of guys that can come into the team and... So you've been contacted by... No, absolutely not. No, okay. No, it's my own mind. Um, sure. I'll get into it another episode, but I'm, I'm not... My body's not going that well, I, I would say. If you had but to say you th- well being the highest and not well, I'd be closer to not well. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. All right. So, am I interested? Yes. Am I capable? No. Do we both have similar chances of getting on that list at your current state? Yeah, it'd probably be, <laughs> be pretty right. Yeah, okay. So, that, probably, that sure. probably highlights where we're at. Okay. So, talking about fantasy. We asked last week, um, two grand final tickets on the line here. So, if you're not joined up, you need to join Patreon. Patreon <laughs> and become a patron. It's not possible for me to get it right. It's not possible. Just flip them every... T- just do the opposite of what your gut tells you every single time because you get it mixed up. I don't know. Is it dys- dyslexic? Oh. Dys- <laughs> <laughs> so patron, if you're a patron to a place, that's what it, that's what it's, to, you know. Like, like, it's not like I don't understand it. I just yes. can't get it out of my mouth. Okay. Time. So you need to sign up <laughs> for that thing on the website or wherever you like. Two grand final tickets. Fantasy League. It's a crazy prize. Everyone's joined up. Indy hasn't joined up yet, but she will be. Kat's joined up, doesn't know what she's doing. She'd like a name. So we put that up on socials. Went very well. It went very well. Are we going to select one with it for her or with her? For her. Okay, great. No, no, with, 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 with. I know that you don't particularly like reading things. You're not very good at it. So I'm going to read these out for you. Go okay. for it. All right, so these are the names. 
You can comment as you'd like. I will. Geelong Cats with a K. Not bad, not good. Slow s- slow startier, Cartier. Very good. Pass. Oh, it's better than Geelong Cats. Uh, Cartier wins. No. Back Cat. Yeah. Uh, Kit for uh, Kit Katanui. Yeah, that's a good one. I do like a pun with a player involved. What's the uh, anyway? Uh, Mins for the wins with a bracketed N and an S. Yeah, because they're last this, nice Mins. Are these good comments, by the way, man. Yeah, no, they're not. <laughs> uh, uh, Cartier in the finals. Oh, Katia in the finals. Yeah, good. Katia in the finals. Yeah, Charlie didn't get that one either. You like well, that? That's not how you pronounce the name. Well, it yeah, Katia. it's not Katia. Charlie bit my finger. That's that's courtesy of our very own Sam. Okay, thank you, Sam. Yeah. Uh, Jason Akat Manis. Yep, like it. Bit of a throwback to the the King Aka. The Geelong Pussy Cats with a C. <laughs> Just, yeah. uh, flying Ryan or Die Trying. Yeah, not okay. bad. Very good. Katia's classic catches. I don't know what to say to that. The way that's spelt as well, that one with the triple K. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not a fan of that. Yeah. Um, Gorn with a win. I mean, it's... It's quite funny, but it's not relevant. Yep. Balls and all. Yep. <laughs> minute, minute to win it. Minute to win it's not bad, actually. Yeah, last Don't minute mind wins. It. Very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom Barras's Curls Club. Yep. Relevancy? Not really. Uh, Catalina fucking wine mixes with a K. We're getting a shrug from Cartier, so... Yeah. Hasn't been a lot of support back there. Yeah. It's no. a catastrophe. Yep. That is. And there's another one that just says catastrophe. Uh, that's right. And then the last one is very good, I think. Comedy's cunning stunts. Is there... A, do you know what that's about, Cartier? Well, if you swap the first letter of Comedy's each of the last stunts. ones... Ah. Uh, yeah. Get it? Clever. Yep. Oh. Okay. Do you, do you get that as well, Kat? I get it now, okay. yes. Okay. Committee's cunning stunt. So if you're a commentator and that came up and you're commentating and you accidentally missed Yeah, the avoid program, them. It wouldn't be a very nice way to say. So like what, are we going to pick stunning. one right now? What is there any standouts to you? Dad's favourite was Kit Kat Nui. Yeah, it's um, not bad actually. Yeah, Cardia's classic catches probably might give a pass. Mm-hmm. What else is there? <laughs> I think my po- my pick of that would be minute to win it. Minutes. Yeah, minute to win it. I like it. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have. I mean, back cat. You know what? Back cat is just a nice, plain and simple. I liked that. That was one of my favorites. Right. It's not mucking around. Oh. Let's let's. We're not here to you know this and that. Yeah. Back cat. Back cat. Back Welcome. Cat. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much, guys. What's very what's good. your team name again? Scoey back chat. <laughs> All right. What's yours? You haven't entered because you're not a patron. Oh, no, I have entered. Mine's Be My Ballantine. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about this. Oh, uh, it's very good. Well, there you go. Um, that's how we do it. Mm. Very good. Fantasy. Love it. Yep. Now, up next, I would like to do a little bit of a six-part series, if possible. we got time. Okay. This is part one of mm-hmm. this series. What's it's, the series? It's a jump into AFL land because we're starting to get towards the AFL season, right? Are you getting excited about that? I kind of am. Like, I had a bit of a think about it. I was like, oh, we're actually going to get some content to talk about instead of talking about <laughs> random stuff. But I thought, what better way to do it? Right now is the season that uh, ladder predictions start coming up. Yep. Preseason starts. Oh, this team hasn't done this. This is why they're not going to win. This is why they can't win it. This is why they're not good enough. It, it starts right now. It happened to West Coast in 2018 when uh, old mate Tommy Morris, our mm-hmm. favourite, big friend of the family now, but he, yep. he, he wrote us off. Robert Walls. He was one of the guys that wrote yeah, us off. Yeah, early on. It's, it's the latter predictions, though. It's Spooners? The, this person's going to win. Was the, who was the wooden spooner predictor for yeah, that's West Robert Coast? Walls. Yeah, Robert Walls. Yeah. yeah, and then Carlton hired him. So, yeah, they've gone well, haven't they? <laughs> so, anyway, what I thought over all of that is too much negativity. Too much, too much of these guys can't do this. This isn't going to happen. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. How about we lift the level of po- positivity? Yeah, love it. We at Back Chat give every team in the competition a reason that they're going to win the 22, 2022 grand final. Why your team can win. I'm excited. Year. Will you talk about my team? Who is your team? Freo. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm going to do alphabetical order because if I did it any other order, it'd be like, oh, why did you do that? They're going to win more. Yeah. So alphabetical order, we're going to do the first three teams, All right. which will be Adelaide, <coughs> Brisbane, and Carlton. And yes, I had to do a Google search to confirm that they were the first three alphabetically ordered. Just like I, I thought I had it right, but then yeah, check. Collingwood is just after Carlton, just in case yep. you're playing C-A-C-O. all right. Yep. So the first three, why your team can win the AFL Grand Final in 2022. Adelaide. Yes. Do you want me to let you know why Adelaide can win? Please tell me because I don't know how they could. Yeah, they didn't have a very good year last year. But they mm-hmm. have something that almost no other team in the AFL has. And that's Adelaide Oval. Yes. Port Adelaide has Port that Adelaide. as well. Yep. But it's not called Port Adelaide Oval, is it? It's no. It's called Adelaide Oval. It's in mm-hmm. the middle of Adelaide. In terms of intimidation scale, it is... Right up there with Optus Stadium. Is in it? terms of playing there as an away team, everyone flocks. It's in the middle of the city. Everyone gets on the beers beforehand, flocks to, this, flocks to the Adelaide Oval, and it's intimidating. It's yep. hard to play at. They have that, maybe, with COVID. Who knows? But I think I think Adelaide that. will. Yep. It's, like I said, it's not called Port Adelaide Oval. It's called mm-hmm. Adelaide Oval for a reason, and that is one big reason they can do it. They've got a new coach, Matty Nix. They've got one more season under him. So that was his first year last year. they they, get, they know the game plan. Yep. They've got a good midfield. I think the big fella and Rory O'Brien can get back to his best. Take him to the glory in the midfield with Laird underneath him, with Ben Keezy. Ben Keys, but I like calling him Keezy. Yep. Good player. I know you don't know who that is. Easy breezy Keezy. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So they've got a good midfield, and they're, young, they're, they're led by a bit of a young brigade. So I think with the home ground advantage, I think with everything kind of going well for them, I think they can get it done. You need to win, what, 11, 12 games to make the finals? Uh, 12 to make finals, usually. Yep. Yep. So if they can get, they can have a pretty good home stand, Yes. win maybe eight, steal a few on the road. That's correct. They're there. They get to finals. Anything can happen in finals. It starts 0-0 zero, zero in the finals. That's correct. Um, I will say uh, last year they beat Melbourne, they mm-hmm. beat Geelong, and they came within a kick of Port Adelaide. So they were top four teams. Big three, yeah. Right. So well, why not? Why not Adelaide? Why not? That should be their slogan why for the us? season. Why, not, why us? not us? There we go. That's why Adelaide you know can what? win. That could be the slogan for every bad no. team. Good. That's why they can win. Are they very good? No. Can they win it? Yes. yes. Go Adelaide. Go the Crows. Who else can win it? Team two, Brisbane. Mm-hmm. The Lions. With Starts with a B. Yep. Um, Brisbane Lions. Why can they win it? <sighs> Put simply, they're good. That's mm-hmm. why they can win it. They're a good team. They've been in the finals. They've been they've been in a position to go deep in finals the last couple of years. I'm trying to keep things positive, but they haven't been able to do well in finals. They haven't been able to get those wins on the board when they need them come finals time. They've done everything else. They've finished top of the ladder, right up the top two. They look good in finals. They've got a good game plan, but they haven't been able to get it done. So all they need to do is win finals. I mean, it sounds it. obvious. Mm-hmm. But that's all they need to do. They have they have every they have every box ticks. The game plan, the players, uh, key position players. Harry A- Harris Andrews down back, uh, up forward. They got a key position player Joe Danaher. They got in the middle. They got big Oscar McInerney. He's got a big nose, but he can play. He's a big man. He has a very big nose, Oscar. Yeah, I'm I'm actually a fan of his. You've seen it in person. Yeah, it's a big nose. I told it to him on the field. No, he's a big snozzer. He's got a big snozzer, but yeah. he can play the big fella. Yep. Get it down to Lockie Neal. Get it down to the rest of the midfielders in there. They got a chance. Are they primed just with how much they've lost at the back end of the season in the last sort of three, four seasons? Are they due? Is that a Stewie thing? Due. Can, can uh, they be due? I think maybe not due, but they know what it's like to lose in finals and to, to lose close finals. They lost last year to the Western Bulldogs by a point. Yep. Um, they would know the feeling of losing a final. And if we're talking positively, why can they win the grand final? Well, losing finals like that and knowing that feeling, they'll have to take that and turn it into a winning feeling. Yep. And that's how you do that. Yes, it can go another way, but we're not doing that. No. We're not doing it that. that Staying positive. Yeah, positive. Brisbane to win in 2022. Go Lions. <laughs> <laughs> ah, very good. Carlton. Carlton. Oh, Carlton. The two, Navy Blues. I've got two words for you. Go on. Sam Walsh. Yep. Just signed? Just signed. Four-year extension. Um, Sam Walsh is the way, reason Carlton can win the flag. 
Sam Walsh and Charlie Kerno and Harry Mackay. Uh, Cripps? No, nah, Paddy Cripps is he's he's fallen away a little bit from where he can get to. That's why Sammy Walsh. Sam Walsh reminds me of Chris Judd in a way. We haven't seen a young Huge. player. Yeah, but we haven't seen a young player not as explosive as Chris Judd and not Chris Judd, but plays for Carlton like Chris Judd did. Wore <laughs> the same clothes. We've, 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 yeah, we've never we've never seen we haven't seen a more consistent young guy in the competition than Sam Walsh in a very long time. So the consistency he can bring, he can actually put a team on the back of his shoulders and take them to the Holy Land. Could he be the reason for Crips to have a little yeah Crips saison? Yeah, a little bit. I think I think um, Crips has been injured for the last couple of years, yeah, and pretty clearly he's been hindered, and he looks like he's been playing sore. If he's had a good preseason, good off season. Um, remember, their coach got removed. They got a new coach in Voss. They got new players. They were the most active at trade period um, this year and free agency, and they've added a new, lot of new guys. So they have a new coach, new game plan, new players. Um, I mentioned Sam Walsh, but Charlie Kerno gets forgotten a lot. He is a gun. Hasn't played for a couple of years. Had some big knee injuries. If they can get him back, it turns Harry Mackay, who will go down as one of the best players I've played on in my last sort of four or five years of playing. He absolutely wow. towed me up one day at uh, Metricon. Towed me up. W- wingspan bigger than any player I've ever played on. Bigger than Buddies. Bigger than, uh, I don't know, who else? Uh, Roughhead. Uh, ben Brown. Yeah, Ben. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 throw that name at me. Like that. He's a gun, Harry Mackay. Yeah. But he's been doing it by himself. If he can get someone like a Charlie Kerno with him, Carlton can make a run. Tell you what. You got really me excited big. about Carlton. I'm telling you. How much, Charlie, look up how much they're paying for the win, for the grand final. I'll have a look. I, I'm telling you right now. Yeah. Th- Carlton may seem like I'm drawing a long bow, but I, I don't hate them. I don't hate them. And yep. that's why Carlton can win. They win the-, the Blue Baggers. <laughs> 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 that's why Adelaide, Brisbane, and Carlton can win the grand final in 2022. I don't think any of those, I'm not making anything up in those. No. So, I tell you what, I'm going to bet on all of them. I've got the odds here. Yep. So Carlton, twenty six bucks to win the uh, e- premiership. Easy, easiest money I've ever that's made. Short. <laughs> yeah. That's short. I mean, look, I'll get a little bit off the positive bandwagon. There's no way they win the grand final. <laughs> hey. No, no. no you got so, me excited. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I think there's a genuine chance they win the grand final. Yeah. Do you want to know the other two? You've yes, please. Yeah, so. sure. All right. So Adelaide, sixty seven. Yeah, that's quite long. Uh, Brisbane, nine dollars. Who's favourite? According to, these, according to these betors. Melbourne. Yeah. Right, that makes yeah, sense. Ben yeah, Brown, then, of course. Big right, ben we're, Brown. we're not going to get to them. So next week, we'll do Collingwood, we'll do Essendon, yep. and we'll do Fremantle. Look at you with the alphabet. Yep. All right, cool. Happy with that? Very happy with that. That's why those teams can win the grand final, and I don't think any of that's drawn in the long bow. No. All right, perfect. Let's move to Super Bowl. We started talking about it before. Minnesota Vikings. Yep. Go Vikings. Let's go Vikings. Um, next year. Yeah, we're not going for the Cowboys. Absolutely not. It's going to be the Rams versus Cincinnati Bengals. Yes. We can talk about the stories for the Rams. We got Matty Stafford, who's come across from Detroit, and he's doing his thing. He's got OBJ, so Odell Beckham Jr. He's come from New York Giants uh, to Cleveland to LA. He's bouncing around. He's moving around. He's very good, though. They've got a lot of good stories in that team. Yep. They've had Cooper Cup, who's done very, very well for a wide receiver this year. But they're not, they're not our team. They're not no. back chat's team. They're not back chat's team. Who's our team? Since Let's go Bengals. <laughs> I don't know. What Smoke and Joe. Yeah. So Big fan of Smoke and Joe. Smoke and Joe Burrow. Followed him since his time at LSU and was just, he's handsome. He's a Heisen winner. Brings out the cigar after wins the national championship at LSU. And now he had a rough season last season, got injured. First, probably first proper season. Takes the Bengals to the Super Bowl. Is Super Bowl on your list of uh, things you want to do? Is it on a bucket list? Sports? Do you have a sports bucket list? Or is that a thing? Yeah, I 100 percent want to go to the Super Bowl, and eventually back chat goes to the Super Bowl. Okay, but for now, I'm going to have to buy a ticket like regular people. Mm. That's where the hurdle comes because, look, what's the most expensive grand final AFL grand final ticket? What do you reckon it would be? Well, I mean... That you could buy as a public member. Like, none of these, like, you know, Rio Tinto buying packages things. Perth was pretty wild. Um, yeah. You know, went like last year. Melbourne yeah, yeah, it was in Perth. Yep. Uh, I reckon the cheapest you could get was... You say most expensive or cheapest? Oh, well, cheapest probably 180. Oh, man. 
When if you got if you if you went in the the that was thing, a prelim, bro. That nah, one eighty sounds way too cheap. I no, it was okay. Yeah, it was about one eighty. You could get one seat up in the upper echelon. Okay, behind a pillar. Most expensive. I mean, if you got a proper package, you'd be paying five grand. Like it's a lot. Yeah, like five grand maybe. But yeah. The Super Bowl. I'm Could five at, grand get us to the Super Bowl for one ticket? I will say, according to Charlie, no. And I say according to Charlie because he was challenged as he walked in today with this. I see the cheapest one I see is about five five thousand eight hundred. I said no. I see a five five. There's a cheaper one on there. It's four eight three. Four thousand eight, and that's. Deep. That's up there. Oh, I see it. 4,830. That is uh, on at the back of the end zone in the highest echelon you could possibly get. You wouldn't even know who the players so are. that is the cheapest ticket you could get to the Super Bowl. I can see some like run-of-the-mill ones. There's 11,000. There's 13,000. Just in the middle of the ground, just a $37,000 seat, uh, a $40,000 seat. Um, and this is just for the one seat. Like You're not going for... With your mate. There's a forty thousand dollars seat in the middle of the ground, sort of, you know, ground level. Forty thousand dollars. Do you still want to take back chat to the Super Bowl? I mean you you got to Depends pay. how many patrons you're we kinda, get. You're gonna run this thing. <laughs> if you'd like to send back chat to the Super Bowl, you can join <laughs> Patreon and buy, and we need the entire entirety of Australia to join up. Yeah, for five dollars a month we'll get there. We are lucky enough. Uh, who's going to win? We're going to go for Cincinnati. Yeah, we got to go Cincinnati. Th- first time, 33 years they've been in the Super Bowl. We've got our guy Smoking Joe there. That's who we're backing. I don't want an LA team to win. Do you bet at all? Uh, yeah. Maybe on like a grand final day. Um, maybe Super Bowl. A Super Bowl? Yep. Why don't we have a little bet? Okay. And not against each other? No. Let's get a little bet that maybe if anyone else is listening... Wants to have a little bet with us. Okay. And I'm not talking... Like, I, I don't bet really either. I'm not going to sit here and say oh, I'm a big better. I think I've put $10 on something once and I was once. like, oh my gosh. Oh, wow. So you don't bet. Yeah, no, I think 10 is probably the max. Okay. Like, I'm not. I'm just not a big guy. Let's go Cincinnati to win. Yep. Joe Burrow's MVP. Of course. If they win, he gets MVP. And then I want a little third leg to just spice our multi up a little bit because we're not going to put much on it and it'd be nice to put $10 on and win $100 back. Let's maybe do something with a punter. Okay. Because um, there's plenty of markets there that you can get on. Because it's not a surprise. I mean, it will be. you will know you're about to listen to Cam Johnson. Mm-hmm. One of the best in the business. We're very lucky to get him on this podcast. Yep. Led punting yards in 2021 yep. for the Houston Texans. He's about to have a chat to us. Yes. So I think we'll find a market about punting yards or something. Burrows. MVP into yes. Cincinnati to win. Yes. Into some sort of kicking market. We'll put that up on Sunday on Backchat Socials. Mm-hmm. And we may even find a way for everyone to get around it. Oh, I would love that. If we could get a little Backchat. Not, not, not to, not, we're not making the big bucks. This isn't yeah. a cryptocurrency. We're not market. trying to make it to next year's Super Bowl with this coin. Absolutely not. But if we could get that up, I reckon we can do that. The best part of winning is winning with your mates. And I've always said that. Doesn't matter how much. <laughs> it sounds like something Dino Cons would say, mate. He's a smart right? man. He's a very smart right? man. Yeah, okay. maybe. All right, good. Yep. All right, before we get there, we're going to speak to Cam Johnson. He's, uh, he's led the league in punting this year. He's broken all-time records in the NFL. More importantly, he's from Geelong. Yep. He's played AFL. Yeah, it's, well, yeah, Wait, yeah. He got listed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, give the guy his... Uh, we'll have a chat to him about it. We'll yeah, ask well, him why we'll it didn't quite out. work out at AFL level. Because he was drafted by Melbourne. Yep. Spent a bit of time on the rookie list there. Mm-hmm. But he's doing better things now. He's oh, playing yeah. an NFL team. Yeah. <laughs> oh, seriously. Yeah. Like Melbourne, who cares? What have they done? Won a premiership. Uh, Play with Matt Brown. All right, cool. That's done. Super Bowl done. Media watch, I said last week. This is the last one. Then we're going to Cam Johnson. Media watch. Yeah. I think we need to bring it back properly, and we have. And since we did... I didn't actually have a lot of alerts from people on social media. So if you'd like to let me know about something that I need to bring up and talk about on, on Backchat, that's in the media sphere, in the mainstream media sphere, that someone needs a little bit of pulling up. Can I, can I talk about what happened last week on Media Watch? Yes. So we're a very transparent podcast, but we did go pretty hard on Tom Brady mm. last week. But we by the time we recorded on a Monday... And the episode gets released on a Thursday. I'm just being completely transparent with y'all. Uh, came out on a Thursday. 
he retired in that time. And we went pretty hard on the media, sort of announcing retirement. his retirement before him. It didn't seem, it would have just been old news if he left in the episode. So we took it out. But so we did go hard last week on Media Watch. Mm. So it's, it might seem like this is the first time we bring it back. It's a very good point. But we are bringing it back. We'll start with Malcolm Conn versus Will Schofield. Now, yes. this is the Justin Langer yeah. area of discussion. Yes. Uh, okay. Without, What's your Twitter handle again? Will Schofield. Easy. I went wide with that. You I? go have a look at it. Back chat, Charlie. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Will Schofield, you can go back and have a look. Look, I, I basically said that um, Mal- Malcolm's been writing stories about Justin Langer for a long time now. Malcolm used to work at Cricket Australia. Yep, media manager or yep, something. Yep, he now works for the Sun Sydney Morning Herald. Maybe he's a cricket, he's a lead cricket writer, a Sydney newspaper, doing a good job, fine journalist. But this particular topic has been one that he's written about a lot, and he's written quite hardly. Uh, I monitor just like I monitor most things, and mm-hmm. I just felt like he was gunning for Justin Langer's head. Now Justin Langer's had to resign, and Malcolm Conn is. Right, maybe. Well, the things that he was reporting have now, I guess if you looked at it just in hindsight, he was spot on. I was more, I, I, I was more sort of, it wasn't about right or wrong for me. It was, mm-hmm. it was the position he was taking for a very long time that would appear to be, appeared to be headhunting for someone's job, whether that's the national cricket coach or whether that's, Sandra, who banks for the Commonwealth Bank, I don't like people gunning for someone's head. No. Like clearly having a point. like I, I, An I agenda. Like, yeah, yeah, and that's what that was. And and he succeeded. So, like, <laughs> Malcolm Conn. But I wasn't happy with it. And so I let him know. He had a little bite back. He had a little bite back. Yep. I told him to piss off and in a nice way. I, I, Some I, quote tweeting. Yeah, but I just thought I'd highlight that. Well, that turned back into uh, Mitch Johnson, who be very, very big friend yeah. of family here. Right now, open a new tab, search Mitch Johnson back chat. There's a whole episode there. It's very good. Uh, One of my favourites. Yeah, top three. Yeah, no, that's your top. That's your top. That's your favourite. Yeah, we got to bond over cricket. You were very happy to have a cricketer on yeah. this podcast. Yeah. And I was happy to watch your happiness. Yeah. But that's not the point here. Sometimes your happiness just slowly creeps back. Um, is this a quote? Yeah, it's uh, Powderfinger. Powderfinger. My happiness. Happy- okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so Mitch Johnson yep. used to bowl quicks for Australia. Well, yeah, he's come quick. well and truly off the long run over the weekend. Yep. It's bowled a short one. Published uh, on the back page of the paper, um, come at uh, Malcolm Conn, come at Crickets Australia, come at Pat Cummins. Um, he's called him gutless. And he feels like the baggy green's been disrespected by behaviours of players. And I kind of agree. Some very strong takes. I kind of agree with the takes he's got. And I, I can respect it because... He's it, been there. Would he know? Yes, he would. Yep. Would you or I know? No. We, we really... No. <laughs> Don't, Dan. No, 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 no. But... No. But Media Watch is about this. He went really hard at some people and... Mixed coverage. Some people liked it. Some people don't. Well, I'm just here to say I liked it. I hmm. like Mitch Johnson's takes. I thought it was strong, opinionated, but it was from a position that you would know. And so it's insightful. You can you can do that from that position, right? And also, it would have been very easy for him just to not say anything. So, yeah, correct. So he's he's been disappointed by a few things about how it's been reported, about yeah. potentially how uh, the information's been getting out to the yep. press, about, uh, yeah, the method, the information has been acquired, and the behaviour of the Australian cricket team and the players... Yeah, are you are you are you hacking your coach down? Someone who's taking you to the World Cup, someone who's taking you to the Ashes, someone who's reset your culture. Yeah, came in at a pretty rough time. What's happened? They've brought him in. He's reset the culture. He's turned them into a winning team, and then they don't like him because he's too strong, too hard. Yep. Um, you know, doesn't take mistakes lightly. Yep. That's that's how that's how good coaches operate. Jesus, it's going to be an embarrassing look if they turn to shit in the next 12 months. You sort I kind of, of hope they do. You sort of hope for it, yeah. Do you think most of Australia thinks like that or is it just WA? That are kind of, I, I have in the back of my mind, like, I really wouldn't be that upset if these guys fail. Oh, I've been feeling like that about cricket for a while. 
honestly, I just I've lost um, my passion towards the Australian cricket team. I feel like we've put them on a pedestal for a long time, and now honestly, Dude. couldn't care if they lose. Can you give me how you feel about this? Because I feel like your opinion is more valid than mine. <laughs> it's not. No, no, it I really le- is legit. For the last probably three years, I just couldn't care if Australia win. What I'm almost. Lang- what about Justin Lang getting? Yeah, he's been absolutely shafted, especially when all the players stay silent. I mean, if they don't want it, at the same time, if they don't want him as their coach, what are they going to do? They're not going to back him. No, but I've been thinking about that. Like, the players are in a hard position, right? They're employed by Cricket Australia. Yes. They've clearly... Because uh, the selectors all of a sudden will go, oh. Yeah, well, but some of them have had something to do with Justin Langer being removed as coach. Yep. So... When you've got all these former players who are highly respected coming out in support of Justin Langer, yet the team won't, and Cricket Australia what's, doesn't seem what's to... What's better? People stay silent. So players stay silent. We don't hear from them. Or coming out and being honest. Not, hey, I want him out. He's a bad coach. What about what about something like this? Let's just Go say um, player X that plays in the first 11 cricket team for Australia. Um, incredibly, th- start with thanking your coach for resetting your team's culture and turning it into a winning one. Thank you, Justin Langer, for that. Thank you for helping us win. You've been a great coach. Now's the time for us to move to another direction. Yes, we've had some differences, but potentially the best thing for us going forward is to go with someone else. And that's how I feel. That's it. You and I could talk about this forever and without having sort of any experience in it. So I'll throw it to you as someone who went through a coaching change in Mm. John Walsfold to Adam Simpson. Mm. Um, before he left the Eagles, were you aware that that was going to happen? Was that a, I can't recall, was that an end of contract thing? Um, it was a bit of a time's up kind of thing. Yep. So as a player then, were you expected to say, hey, you know what? Like, I mean, I guess if you know he's leaving, then you don't need to. This, it probably shoots cricket, yourself in the foot. Where cricket and footy come in different? Because like, no one asked me about Wish's position. If they had of, I would have probably supported it. But yeah, but you're not I, I, gonna, I get a say if you wouldn't get have dropped. You wouldn't have got dropped from the team if you came out supporting Wusher. No, I don't think like so. Like in cricket, where the selectors I'm pretty sure have I did put power. something out publicly when when he finished up. Like, mm. we're going to have Wusher on the podcast as well. Yeah, Wusher, very soon. Nizzy. Yep. Jail. Yeah, Justin. Lane we'll have Jail on on very shortly. Yeah, that's it. Um, but next, mm. Cam Johnson. Mm. I'm really excited about this. This is a Super Bowl week. Wanted to interview someone in the NFL, and I was just like. A bootstrapper, maybe a jersey maker. Tom Brady was sort of busy. <laughs> I really was thinking we'd be scraping the bottom of the barrel. Mm. But we've got the leading punter from the last year. I mean, I'm it's crazy. Happier. I couldn't be happier. It's almost as crazy as the fact that we're giving away two grand final tickets for our fantasy league. Subscribe to YouTube, sign up to Patreon, do something else. <laughs> All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, Super Bowl week, and we are joined by, look, one of the greats going around at the moment in the NFL, um, Dan, I'm going to have to tell you a little bit about this man, Cameron Johnson, um, he's just finished season 2022 in the NFL, playing for the Houston Texans, led the league this year in punting yards. Huge. Broke some records with the Philadelphia Eagles while he was there. He's been a big-time punter in the NFL for about five years. Probably probably the league's best, if I'm really honest. But more importantly, he's straight out of the Mick Turner footy factory in Geelong. He grew up in Geelong. <laughs> G'day, Cam Johnson. How are you, mate? Very well, yourself? I'm good. I'm good. Now, let's start with that. You're a Geelong boy. Yeah, yeah, Geelong originally. So I uh, grew up there. Yeah, you know, we went to Joey's there in Geelong um the john falcons all that type of thing so um yeah haven't been back for a while now it's about what three years since i've been back but yeah hopefully get back there soon so you played footy as a kid you played st joseph's st joseph's is about three minutes from my house dan that i grew up in um i was down the road at geelong college st joey's were always better at footy than us so i'm no doubt cam was a better footy player growing up you got drafted coming out of school cam um you went to melbourne how was that experience uh, no, it was, it was fun. It was short lived. Uh, yeah, it didn't work out the way, I mean, ideally the way I wanted it to all work out, but, uh, no, I loved the experience. Yeah. I mean, it was a good opportunity to be in a professional environment. Um, yeah, no, it, it was a good time. Why, why don't you think you made it as an AFL player out of interest? Uh, probably cause I want to, I don't know, try to hit the ball real long every single time. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't know. It just, yeah, it just didn't really work out in the end. So, um, yeah, so yeah, I mean, 
it, it was it was a good experience, but it was it was pretty short lived. I was in and out of that uh out of that pretty quickly. So so yeah, you're at Melbourne for a year, played in the VFL with Casey Scorpions, um, finished up after a year, and you joined Pro Kick Australia. Um, Chapman and some lads over here, Tyson Barry. Um, do you know Tyson? Nope. Um, Tyson Barry's over Western Australia running things over there. How was that experience with Pro Kick Australia coming out of the AFL? I assume you didn't play NFL growing up. Nah, nah that's amazing. Uh, what Pro Kick and, you know, Chappie, Johnny, and then, yeah, Tyson there in the WA do, it's really incredible. So, they, I mean, they give you a pathway where, hey, sign up, come down, have a kick with him at a local field, and then, yeah, you know, I mean, within eight months, you're going to be playing in front of 100,000. Yeah, you know, I mean, in a game you've never actually played a play before so they do an incredible job getting you ready and getting your set so and they're, they're dominating now they're getting what they've got 50 kids a year coming through it and trying to move on to college so um they're doing incredible work so you know, it all worked, kind of worked out weird i didn't think you know when you'd be doing afl and all of a sudden you're moving to america so um but no it was a great experience what how did that even work out did you um just hear about other guys getting involved in that or did someone approach you and um and uh, invite you along it was uh tom hornsey he uh tom hornsey as well played. i was at the falcons with yeah, tom hornsey <laughs> yeah he uh he went to memphis so he was a couple of years before me he went to memphis won a uh, hunter of the year in college twice so um i kind of kind of saw what he was doing and i think once afl had done you know i was like you're 20 you want to stay within sport plus you know, i mean Hey, here, here's a scholarship. You don't have to work for four years. Go to America and play football. I'm like, yeah, that's uh, that's that's pretty nice. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, sort of found out what Tom Hornsey the program he went through, and then uh, contacted Chappie from there. Is it is it a is it a promise they make that we'll have you playing for a college if you follow the program? Uh yeah, it was more of a so you got to go through a trial at first. So we went to I kind of met him up, met Chappie at just a random football field in Carlton in Melbourne, and um. He just put a bag of balls out on the field and said, uh, show me, yeah, I mean, just go hit him <laughs> whatever way possible as far as you can. So I think ideally they look for leg, they look for the leg strength first and what they can work with from there. Um, so, yeah, it's it's an interesting experience. You've definitely got to have the certain leg strength to get in. Um, but from there, yeah, I mean, he teaches everything else. So. And so you come out of... What do you, do you play any games of NFL before you get to a college scholarship at Ohio State, or are you just sending them clips of you <laughs> smashing balls down at Carlton? Yeah, that's all it is. You said, uh, yeah, it was kind of. It's <laughs> nuts. Yeah, you know, I mean, at first the coaches don't really fully, uh, you know, I mean, can believe it at first, but you really just send. You're just doing film after film after film. It's probably what a eight to twelve month journey with him. And then, uh, yeah, he's doing all your work. He's sending the film. And then all of a sudden, um, I mean, I think I got a call one day. Hey, we need you on a flight on Monday. Um, you can go do a visit, meet the coaching staff, and then uh, they'll offer from there. So uh, it's pretty quick. Once they start the offer, the ball starts rolling pretty quickly. So What's the what's the biggest challenges uh, switching from the AFL ball and the AFL game, which you would have grown up doing, to kicking an NFL football? What What are some of the challenges? Uh, just the margin for error on the American ball is a whole lot less than the Australian one. Yeah, I mean, the Australian one, you can kind of be getting tackled, drop it, and still get a whole, yeah, I mean, still get 40, 50 on it. But the American one, yeah, I mean, the, the margin for error is a lot smaller. But just the time difference, too, you've got from snap uh, to kick, it's to snap to punt, it's two seconds. So snap takes 0. 0.7, so you've got 0. 1.3, yeah, you know I mean, to get it off. So um that'd be the, the biggest thing and then just the weather difference you know, i mean all of a sudden you're playing in negative 15 in snow and that's uh, you know I mean, you can't really replicate that in australia at all so i mean all of a sudden you're playing it's uh, it, it can be pretty rough early on but then you get used to it is there advantages coming from the afl that you think well growing up kicking a footy in australia is there advantages you'd have over i guess american kids growing up playing the game there I think that's what they've found now with the college rules. Um, with the college rules, anyone can start. So, like, once the ball snapped, any person can start running down the field. So, um, the college rules now, people, you, everyone's rolling out to the right. Um, if you're a right footer, left. If you're a left footer, and um, kind of just reading what's coming at you. So, the Australian way of it, you know, I mean, just just rolling out drop hunts now. So, um, <laughs> with the college rules, you know, I mean, it's it's really starting. You know, I mean, Chappie with Pro Kick, they're really starting to take over because. 
that's what colleges want. The more you, the longer you can take to roll out, the faster they are down the field. So, um, yeah, Chappie, they're absolutely killing it with all the, with the rollout guys. So, what's it? Um, what's the pathway to being a punter when you grow up in the states? Because you know, when you're three or four in Australia, you, you've got a footy in your hand, so you can't like you're always kicking a footy. Um, well, I mean, a lot of a lot of boys are anyway. What about in the states? Do you know how these guys develop that skill of, of punting the ball? Yeah, I think it's a lot more. I think it's soccer to begin with. Um, they're probably playing soccer, and then from there, they're looking at it like, "Hey, I can play on like this high school football team as a punter, as a kicker," um, and then roll from there. They're doing camps and trying to get scholarships um, that way. So, yeah, the kids now that that's, that's the crazy thing now is like since Chappie sort of. They've done the rollout is you know all the american kids now have to start doing that drop hunt running out to the right or the left um so they're starting to adjust to it but at the same time you know i mean they're not doing that from what three four years old like the australian kids are so so okay so get let me get this straight you grow up in warm ponds just uh, around the corner from me grovedale in geelong you play in the mick turner footy factory geelong falcons get yourself rookie drafted to melbourne you spend a year on that list you do eight months sending video clips over to the uh college football system in america and you find yourself at ohio state one of the big big universities in america what's that experience like do you pinch yourself do you rock up at school first day and go what's going on here yeah, it's uh, yeah. I mean, they do Chappie and Johnny. They do an incredible job preparing you for it. Um, but at the same time, it's yeah. I mean, it's still a shock when you get on, you get on campus, you get ready to roll. To, um, you can get over there in May. You got training camp. Sort of training camp comes around pretty quick, and then all of a sudden, you know, I mean, your first games in front of a hundred thousand. We had a, we had a was it a, sort of like an inter club practice. Um, you know, I mean, practice match type of thing, and they filled it out with a hundred thousand at the stadium too. Uh, they just <laughs> the, fan, the fans, are, the fans are ridiculous. Uh, they're great. They're, they're nuts. So, um, and then just trying to get used to the, yeah, you know, I mean, you go on a class all day, and then all of a sudden you you get lifting in the morning, straight to class, straight to practice, then back tutoring at night. Um, just kind of getting in that schedule takes a fair bit to get used to i think at first now i terrible by me dan and terrible by you for not picking me up to be really honest mate i've forgotten the most important question we ask our guests here on back chat true uh cameron um we ask our guests and it's usually the very first question you get we're just so excited to get into it. oh yeah i actually i'm gen <laughs> genuinely excited to be interviewing to be honest Look, we know you've been a great punter in the NFL for a number of years now. We know you've done your stuff there. We, we, we know all that and we don't really oh, – we do care, but we don't care. We want to know what's your best sporting achievement not on the NFL field. Or, or Aussie rules. We, we can't – Yeah, actually, yeah, you've got to park Aussie rules, unfortunately, because you were a, effectively a professional Aussie rules player. So, from, for instance, I won the under-9s 80-metre uh, hurdles championship. Um, Dan, bit of a cricketer back in the day. Yeah, you, you, you name it, I've done it, won it. You got something that you've done <laughs> that isn't uh, punting an NFL uh, ball? Uh, this one hurts, but I think I made not, probably under 15s, under 17s, made 98 in cricket. Oh, <laughs> it, then, uh, then, then, pop, then pop one up to uh, mid-off. So. <laughs> I was going to say, how'd yeah, you get I, out? I was pretty happy. <laughs> I, was, I think I got too excited at the end. I was uh, pretty happy with that knock. It was the best one I did. But then, yeah, just, you know, I mean, spooned one to uh, mid-off. And, yeah, that went that went downhill pretty quick then. So. 98. Uh, that had to be brutal. one of the... Yeah, the not the non Australian football or uh, or punting that'd be it. So. That, that's a uh, that's a good effort. Ninety eight runs, Dan. Have you um have you ever told any of the the boys on the um on the Texans uh, your cricket sort of prowess? Do they <laughs> do they know what cricket is? They get. I, I would put it um you know in the ashes when there's you know the T twenty and stuff. So I'll have it on the phone and they're just they're super confused by it. They don't get that. <laughs> Americans don't get that you can have a five day game. And there's no winner or loser at the end. You can have a draw at the end. They, uh, they'd be like, they'd be like, what, so what happened at the end of the five? I was like, yeah, I mean, they, it was a, it was a draw at the end, and they just don't understand it. They like, you wait, you went all five days for that. So, wow, uh, Americans they don't, they don't like that. So, um, look, I don't want to speak poorly of punters and special teams players, and for people that don't understand the NFL, there's different aspects of NFL. There's offense, there's defense, there's special teams. Cameron is a special teams player. What? How are punters? received at college level are they rated are you a big part of the team or are you doing your own thing and uh mixing in with guys off the field how does that all dynamic work 
Yeah, that, in college they want you doing everything the team's doing. So um, yeah, you get along with everyone. Yeah, you know, at, at the play, you know, I mean, offense and defense. When training camp and it's thirty degrees and you're in the, yeah, you know, I mean, you hit ten balls and you're done for the day. And they've got two hours of practice in the sun with the pads and the helmet. They kind of get, they can get pretty annoyed with you. Um, <laughs> but no, you get along with everyone really well. It's a similar, you know, I mean, it's a locker room similar to you know, the change rooms back in Australia with the the way everyone is. Um, so it's not too bad. Were you um were you recognised as the uh, the punter? Because when I, I spent a semester at um, Virginia Commonwealth University, and there was a there was a it wasn't a um, big sports school, but they had a, a basketball team that was like in the NCAA tournament, and you could see the basketball players coming from a mile away. You know, they just on the campus with everyone else. Um, are you sort of able to just um, stealthily get around campus um, as Cam Johnson, or are people coming up to you as big dog on campus? No, you. Yeah, you can get around fine. It's uh, it's usually yeah the big the big O line or D lineman when they're you know, I mean they're six foot eight three forty so what one hundred and fifty kilos walking around everyone notices them so, um but yeah no you're you're fine. It's, it's all good on campus. People people say that college crowds are different um to the NFL are they? Yeah, college crowds they're just they're yeah I mean they're wild really. It's no I mean you got a hundred. Thousand, I mean, we can play a. I think we played like Florida A and M. We scored more points and they got yards for the day. And you've still got a hundred. You've still got one hundred and five thousand in there the entire game going wild. So, wow. Um, yeah, the, the NFL crowds are in it. Like, yeah, I mean, they're cra- They're yeah, I mean, excited, crazy as well. But the college ones, it's it's something different. So, um, yeah, I mean, some of the best experiences were. I mean, if you go to Penn, if you ever look online, uh, Penn State, the whiteout. Um, it's yeah. yeah, I mean, one hundred and ten thousand going wild. It's uh, some of those experiences can be, you know, I mean, crazy to go through. So if you can ever get to America and go to some of those college games, it's definitely worth the experience. What what is the what do the Buckeyes do? The Ohio, oh no, that's Ohio State. Yeah, yeah. What do the Buckeyes do? Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, they just go nuts. <laughs> 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 they, uh, they they have like they have different nights here you know, in the black uh, blackout stuff like that, but. Um, it's just, yeah, I mean, the fans are wild every single game, no matter what, whoever, whoever you play, they're always there. So you won a you won a national championship in twenty fourteen. What was that like? That, that was that was crazy. That was except yeah, that was uh, that was the first one of the playoff era. So um, played huh. Alabama in uh, Alabama in the Sugar Bowl, and then went on to play Oregon in the national championship. And wow. Um, yeah, that, that was an incredible experience. You know, I mean, we went to the White House, met the president, did all that afterwards. It was, yeah, it was something that, you know, I mean, it's tough to do, but, you know, I mean, winning it was, you know, I mean, it was, it was a great time. So. so who was that? Barack. Barack Obama was president. Yeah. 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 It was, that was, that was funny. You know, I mean, we had to get the security to get into that place as well. But, um, no, I mean, going, you know, just the winning that, I think Ohio State's won eight here. So the stuff to come by, but, you know, I mean, winning one of them and then, you know, I mean, the stuff to come with it was exceptional. That would have been um, pre uh, Donald Trump putting on. I think it was Burger King for the winning college. Remember that <laughs> winning college team that he put on Burger yeah, King. For yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, that that's, was, I, I mean, that's uh, just incredible. That blows my mind. They they take the college team to the White House. Like, what a what an amazing thing to have done in your life. Oh yeah. Now looking back on it now, at the time you just you know I mean you win the game. And they're like you go in the White House. You're going to meet the president, stuff like that. Shake hands with the president. That's uh. It's pretty wild, but at the time, like you're in college, it's kind of like the high state in these schools. You kind of like you lose one game for the year, and everyone's calling for the head coach's job to be fired. You know, I mean, the def- like I think a high state this year lost one or two, and they got rid of the entire defensive side of the ball coaching staff. So wow, you're kind of in a in a you're kind of like in this thing where like winning is kind of expected type of thing. So it's more when you look back on it now, you're like, wow, that experience was incredible um, to be doing those type of things. Talking about coaches, you had Urban Meyer as your coach at Ohio State. What's he like as a coach? He's, for those who do follow the NFL, you know his journey this year, but he's just been fired as the Jacksonville Jaguars coach this year. What's yeah. uh, what's he like as a coach? Yeah, all my experiences were positive. Um, yeah, it was... Do they speak, br- do they yeah, speak to punters ruthless. much? Head coaches, they speak a lot to the punters? Uh, unless you, yeah, he's messing up. <laughs> but, yeah, that <laughs> one was more just, you know, I mean, do do your job, stay out of the way, type of thing. Out of his way, he's got more to be dealing about. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, but yeah, I mean, if you miss it one every now and then, you're definitely going to be getting a 
<laughs> he's going to come after you on the sideline. So, why, why, um, why is it so my- why is it so different between NFL and college? Like, why why is the transfer for coaches so difficult? Uh, NFL, you can pretty much just you can just cut the guy. Where college, you've got to go recruit them. So, um, yeah, you know, I mean, you can because there's no draft. You could technically, if you have a good recruiting class, say like imagine the AFL draft, and you get one, two, four, seven, nine, twelve. Yeah, you know, I mean, you get all those top guys. Right. So you can go and you've got to recruit them and it's a tough because you've got all these other schools going for it. But if you go out and dominate recruiting, you can get, yeah, you know, I mean, an absolute killing with the players and all of a sudden. Um, but at the same time, if you mess that up and you recruit the wrong people, you're kind of in a world of hurt because you're stuck with them for the for the four years until they graduate. Um, all that, yeah, you know, the transport portal coming now so they can transport. The, but yeah, the NFL... Yeah, I mean, it's the margin for error between teams is just so small. Um, you know, I mean, because every player is a quality player in the NFL. So, um, yeah, I just think college, you can really, you can go out and hand pick whatever play you want, really. If you go recruit hard and get the players, um, you can have the guys you want pretty comfortably. Especially when you're not paying them, you could you can get all the top guys and not worry about, you know, blowing a salary cap or any, anything like that. Um, oh, yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like, yeah. Yeah, sorry, go on. Oh, I was going to, yeah, so like my recruiting class, we had Zeke and uh, Joey Bosa, and they're both, what, top three draft picks. And, yeah, I mean, you got both of them on the same team. I think we had, yeah, I mean, 10, eight to 10 first rounders just from one that one recruiting class. So, yeah, if you can land them, it's a good deal. I went through your team. You had those two. You had, look, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I couldn't believe some of the guys you had in your team. You had Michael Thomas. Is that right? You can, you can have the dog in. It's all good. We're we're we're, we're dog friendly here. Oh my bad. Sorry, they're freaking out at all. <laughs> That's all good. Uh, yeah, Mark. Uh, T- scary- oh yeah, that national championship team would have had scary uh, Terry. Yeah, Terry McLaren. Oh, Terry McLaren. Oh, uh, Eli Apple, Von Bell. Oh man. Uh, Sam Hubbard. Yeah, I mean, if you go, I think it's five from the Cincinnati team in the Super Bowl. We, I played with there in, in college. So wow. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's wild. Like you're going to practice every day with these guys in college, and then. Yeah, I mean, now they're the face of the NFL. Uh, faces of the NFL, it's pretty wild. So, we can we just um bring it back a little bit just to like the absolute basics of kicking because I think a lot of people would think that the role of the punter is just to kick it as far as possible, but there's a whole lot more to that, right? Like positioning or landing the ball in a certain spot. Like it's really difficult. Like it's not just kick as you know, like I said as big as you can. What are the sort of tactics going into a kick when it's snapped to you? and you're trying to get height and, and positioning? Yeah, it just depends. Firstly, is where you, you are on the field to start. You know, I mean, if you're backed up, um, you've got a shorter distance for the snap, so then they can rush it. So you are trying to hammer it as far as possible, but then you start to get to the midfield area. You're looking like, okay, let's hit this 40 yards, 38 yards, try and pin them back as far as, far as possible. Um, so that's the one. And then also when you're getting out there, it just depends on what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, if they're in return, if they're in rush, yeah, I mean, if you look at, out there and there's eight, nine guys in front of you and they're all, yeah, I mean, 120 kilos and they can run like anything, you got to be like, all right, well, this, I do want to hammer this far, but also I better get this thing off because he's going to, yeah, I mean, run through me, really. Do, do you, do you have any, um, so a, do you, do you have any, um, any say in any of the play or you're just there and you're relying on the guys around you to say what we're doing? Uh, I'll chat. Yeah, we, we chat to the special teams coach on the sideline before we're going out there. Sort of, I think it's more when like weather conditions come into play. Like we play indoors for our home games. So, yeah, I mean, weather's not an issue. But yeah, I mean, if you're playing outdoors, Cleveland, it's, I don't know, Celsius, negative 10. And there's, you know, I mean, a 20 mile hour wind. You're going to be like, all right, let's, you know, I mean, let's hit this to this side. Let's do this with, um, it, there is a little more tactics to it. Um, then, but then if you're backed up, it's just, hey, let's go after this thing. Let's try and put it as far as you possibly can and, and let the guys go run. Do you, do you get excited at the prospect of an onside kick or like a squib kick? Because obviously they are not they don't come around all that often. When you finally get to do one, are you pumped? He's not doing them. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the pun is that Michael Dixon at Seattle, he's done a couple of the drop kicks to the onside. Um, we usually just use the kicker, so um, I think it's a little more predictable just off the tee. Um, but yeah, I think Dixon's, he's done a couple of drop kicks in the air, trying to chip it over the top of the line. Plus also, uh, you know, I mean, punch it along the ground and try and get someone on top of it. 
Do, I assume you're more athletic than some in the NFL as a punter. Do, do, do trick plays get spoken about? Were they ever spoken about? Were they in the book during college or at either of your NFL teams? Yeah, college didn't work out too well. College, I was negative 12 <laughs> yards uh, <laughs> rushing and we're 0 for, 0, 0 for 1 on throwing. So the issue is because is you're starting uh, – yeah, not great. You're starting uh, – 15 what 14 15 yards back from the line of scrimmage so you're thinking if it's a yeah you know i mean if it's fourth and five you got to get 20 and we had a couple of missed blocks and yeah you know i mean i'm cut down behind um but yeah in the nfl they're, they're always up and they're always in the game plan it's just depending on looks um but then at the same time teams are just they play it safe they'll a lot of the time if you're in a fake area they're just going to keep their starting defense on the field and some of those linebackers yeah i'm I don't know. I could be as quick as anything. I ain't running out, running a couple of those dudes. Um, they're just so big and fast. So, did you um have a? How many times have you watched that hit on Sav Rocker um, before you uh, went over there to play? Because <laughs> that's a big one. That was like in his first yeah, game, right? That yeah, that was when I got into the NFL, and um, there was a few people still in the building who were with Sav, and they were all asking about it. So. But yeah, I watched that a few times. I think the you keep your head on a swivel when you're running down the field. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, if you if you run if you're running across the field watching the guy, you got to keep your head on a swivel, look back because, yeah, I mean, if someone yeah, I mean, peels back and tries to hammer you, it's going to be a bad deal. So you come out of Ohio State, national champion, a couple more years there, and you get uh, picked up as a uh, unsigned free agent. So you don't get drafted, but you get picked up post draft. Is that how that works? What what's that process like coming out of college and yeah. trying to get onto a team? Yeah, so every year, you know, I mean, the, so it's the undrafted free agents. There's the punters. So my year, there was no punters drafted. Um, so you just you, you, your agents talking to teams. Majority, like you maybe get one or two punters, one or two kickers, depending on the draft class every year. Um, and then your agents sort of talking to teams. So a lot of the specialists sign that way. You, uh, yeah, you I mean, you just like, hey, I just want an opportunity. So then you start talking to teams. They sign you, and you just come in and compete. Um, in training camp, or you get an opportunity just to you get to get film. So, um, my first year, it was it was a good experience. So, we did a lot of rollout, the drop punts in college, which doesn't translate as much to the NFL. So, I had a little bit to learn with the spirals, just to tighten up a few things, and um, that was a good experience. There was a uh, Donny Jones, he was later thirty, so he had some guaranteed money. It was his job for the year. I got to come in. Learning training camp, get four games of film, and then uh, come back the following year and uh, and win the job. So, so that year was the year they won the Super Bowl. If uh, I'm not mistaken, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so, I mean, right. what, how do you, how do you, how do you, how, how do you reflect on that? I mean, I know it's probably a you know very close to being in a Super Bowl squad, but assume it was a good learning experience as well. What what are your feelings on it? Yeah, it was. I think it was the best thing that could happen to me. I think if I did get in there that first year, yeah, I mean, I definitely wouldn't have been the player I am right now. That that year, I was really able to, yeah, I mean, you take a whole year to focus on things that you really need to fix up, um, and that's kind of, that kind of set me up, sort of built a really good foundation for the, the following year, and then yeah, I mean, the last what's that four seasons. Um, so definitely, yeah, it's crazy how things work out, but it definitely did work out the the right way. Are you, are you getting paid while you're an un, uh, unsigned free agent while you're on a squad? Like, what, what are you doing if you're not pl- – like, are you, how are you making money? Uh, we, yeah, I mean, you can get – you get when we signed the undrafted deal, there was, some, uh, there was some guaranteed money in there that can tie you over for, the, for that season. So it kind of worked out well that way. And then, you just, like, I was just back in, Col- uh, back in Columbus and just working out every day, just trying to fix up the things I need to fix up and get ready to roll. So you kind of know, like, okay, you got the season and then – yeah, you know, I mean, it's not a full year. It's what eight months, six months, something like that. So you're like, all right, I got this time to fix up these things, and let's roll after that. What's the uh, travel situation like <clears throat> in the in the NFL? Um, obviously, there's that many people that are you know, there's a coaching staff and all of the players. Of course, it must be a lot of logistics for the people to organize to get everyone there. What's that like traveling with such a big group? Ah, uh, it's smooth. They, uh, yeah, I mean, you're getting police escorts wherever you go. Yeah, you know, I mean, the team, yeah, you know, I mean, the team flights there. You just pull up at the plane, jump on, and you fly there. Then, yeah, you know, I mean, you got the police escort to the hotel to the game, and then back to the airport again. So, um, 
yeah, you know, I mean, it's a big group of people traveling, but it's also, you know, you know, and you're in it, the game finishes, you're, you know, you're probably on the plane within two hours and you're already flying, you know, I mean, you're already taken off. You're not going through any airports or anything. It, it, it moves real smoothly. What's your thoughts on the mentality of being a punter in the NFL? Once you get there, there's there's one punter on each team, so there's 32 spots, uh, well, in the world, really. Um, incredibly brutal position and brutal job mentally. A lot of pressure with every kick, a lot of pressure to maintain your spot. There's not a lot of security with your contracts. How do you see it all from the mental side? Uh, consistency, really. I look at it just you got to be consistent. Um, you can't have... A huge upside, but then you're, uh, yeah. I mean, you're a two in, t- you're two in ten. You're going to hammer at seventy, but then in the other, you're going to, be, yeah, you're going to miss hit him. So, I think consistency is the main one where you just, you you got to be consistent as possible every single day. And then it's just, you know, I mean, it's wild. You got, yeah. You know, I mean, they can bring in whatever they want really to work out. You know, I mean? so you just got to make sure you're ready every single day, ready to roll. Um, and just yeah, your your practices mean as much as the games. I mean, because your GM and the the front office there, they're watching uh, they're watching practices. And yeah, I mean, you miss it a handful of them. They'll just go bring in five guys for a workout. And yeah, I mean, you'll be pulling into the park and look across the road, and there's five guys there punting. And just that's the way you find out. So wow, um, which hasn't happened to me, <laughs> thankfully. But you know, I've seen it happen a lot, other, a lot of other positions where guys find out because they're walking to a meeting, and then yeah, you know, I mean, their buddy in the same position's walking through, and he's like, hey, what's going on? And Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm coming here to work out. So, um, or you just see guys walking through the building, and they, uh, you know, I mean, the front office comes down and says, "Hey, bring your iPad up to the front office. Um, we're going to let you go." Yeah, I've seen the hard knocks. The uh, the the little the little lackey comes look, asking for the playbooks to be brought back to the GM or whoever. Uh, were, were you that guy? Yeah, you, were you, you that try, guy at Philly? Were you, you one of those? You try. You try and stay away from that guy. You know, everyone <laughs> knows who he is, and I, I don't. I think, uh, oh yeah, I've seen people yelling at them. You know, I mean, the guy will be standing in the hallway, and they're just like, "Don't do it, not today, no way." <laughs> and then they might, just, or they're just, or they're just having breakfast, and you're just like, "All right, I'm not going near this guy. I'm gonna just go through all the back doors, and we'll figure it out that way." So, wow. um, but yeah, no, in Philly, when I got cut after that first season, it's just, you know, I mean, you get the, call, you, hey, bring your iPad up to the front office, and we're you know, letting you go. So, yeah, <laughs> it's it's pretty cutthroat. So. It sounds like that's just how it is. I mean, that sounds like the way you approach it. But that, that's that's a brutal industry, mate. To be to be having a job one day and then and then the very next day, there's five guys there potentially taking your job, and there's not much you can do about it. Yeah, I think the tough ones just yeah, because you can't unless you get like some you know, I mean some guaranteed in your contract, um, which but the guys who I mean, if you're on a rookie deal, there's not a whole lot of guaranteed in it. And yeah, I mean, it's even just a living situation. You're like, all right, do I do I sign a long term lease here? Do I do it in Airbnb? Because you never know. You never even know when it's going to be up. That was my my first actual full season. It was just, hey, let's just go at Air, Airbnb month to month type of thing, just for the what if situation. Because you never you never really guaranteed anything. Do coaches and teammates at NFL level value good punters? Um, big fan of Pat McAfee, and I know he certainly values a good punter, but. Do, do good teams value punters and special teamers? Yeah, I think it's more when it's just the way it is now with these high powered offenses. You've got to be able to give them as long a field as possible. Like, you know, I mean, you go against Mahomes, Brady, you know, I mean, any of these guys, you start hitting them, you know, I mean, you're backed up and you hit a 30 all of a sudden. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's only got what you can get that in two throws. So you're trying to really hammer the balls, get it as far as down there as possible, and then give your defense as much yardage to work with because these offenses are just so high powered. Um, I mean, you see with the Rams, Cooper Cup, Odell, these guys, it's, you know, I mean, it's ridiculous the, the power they have. So you've really got to try and uh, pin them deep. You played uh, three years with Philadelphia or four? I think it was three seasons. Yeah, four years, three seasons. So you play three at Philadelphia, which um, at some point in time, you'd led the all-time uh, average career punting yards for anyone who kicked over 100 punts, all-time in the NFL for anyone who's ever done it. That's correct, isn't it? I think it was there, yeah, there for a little bit. I think, yeah, early on, they were just letting me go after it. So uh, I think you're, we didn't, didn't you're being modest. much about, the, the, about where... Yeah, I think they keep, we were more just, hey, let's go hammer this thing. We had some uh, we had some real speed on the outside. You know, I mean, these guys who absolutely fly. So all of a sudden you're like, 
all right, let's, you know, I mean, instead of hitting this 45 yard ball, let's go 50 to 60 and let's see these guys run. So, um, but yeah, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a solid start there, which was able to set me up uh, right now. And you're at Houston Texans now. So I sort of got thinking as a punter, like, I mean, you want to win. Uh, anyone who's an athlete wants to win. But as a punter, purely punter, is it is it better to be punting on good teams or bad teams? It, it sounds like a silly question, but, you know, you're obviously going to have more yeah. punts and punting opportunities on a bad team, um, but you're going to win more on a good team. What, what's what's your thoughts there? Uh, we, you want to win. You, I think the, the winning's the main thing because at the end of the day, uh, you know I mean? If I come away from a game with zero punts, uh, I'm pretty happy. You know what I mean? If you're not needed as much, it's kind of like different to the, you know, in the AFL, you want to get 30 and have a big day. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you come out of a game and the offense is rolling and you've punted two times, yeah, I mean, you, you're pretty happy with it. So, um, but yeah, no, it was, it was a good situation down with the Texans. Uh, they got a new special teams coordinator in and I uh, really liked what he was doing down there. So it was, it was a perfect fit to go down there. Yeah. Oh, is is that that's how like um is that that's the least sort of have you had a game where you just haven't gone out to punt at all? Like if you're the only punter, how many times does that happen for you? Yeah, I had an unlucky one in college. Uh, in college, I had eight, seven, eight friends from high school fly over, and it was prime time game versus Nebraska. It was like we were two, they were seven. So we were thinking like, hey, like this would be a great game to come to. Nighttime game, I'll probably punt. Yeah, I mean. Five, six, seven times. We got nothing. We absolutely <laughs> rolled them. I think we won by. I think we won by sixty, and they they flew over, and it was just like, oh, I'm sorry. And then the <laughs> same guy, one of the guys from that group, I've only punted, uh, haven't punted twice, and he come to the next one. Um, the only two games I haven't punted in, I had a buddy there in both of them. So, wow. he, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think he's give up on coming back over now. He's like, hey, I tried twice, and man, we need something here. They would have made it up for it in the stands, though, surely. Oh, I'm sure. I'm, look, I'm sure they'll disappoint you in half yeah. punts, but I'm sure they would have had a blast in the stands. Yeah, I don't know if they would have remembered it anyway. If I did <laughs> they were absolutely. They, they, the tailgating, you know, I mean, you people get there. You know, I mean, you have a nighttime game at eight. People are starting to drink around campus. You know, I mean, you got 100,000 outside the stadium partying all day. So by the time the, uh, by the, time the game starts, yeah, I mean, the, people, people have had a good time. What's the what's the expected lifespan of a punter in the NFL? How, how long can you punt for? Uh, I think the main one is staying firstly like staying injury free. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, if you can stay injury free, there's guys still playing until they're what 38, 39. Um, so they, that's one is just keeping your body you good. And then the other one's just the consistency. I think if you look like the Cincinnati's punter Huber, he's played his whole career there, and he's uh, I don't want to say it wrong, but I think he's played maybe what would he be, 18 something years? He's old. In the one city. So if you can be, <laughs> yeah, if you, if you can be consistent and injury free, and then also you're not, you're not outpacing yourself where, you know, I mean, you take a ridiculous contract and then, you know, I mean, they're like, hey, that's a little too much. We want to pay for a punter. Um, yeah, I mean, you can play for a long time. So, huh. so is that sometimes at the negotiating contract table, you're pulling yourself back a little bit so you're not putting too much pressure on yourself and the team? Yeah, you just got. I think it's just playing it smart. Is yeah, you know I mean, for like getting what what you want, but then also at the same time, you you don't want to get to the stage where you're worth too much, and they're like, hey, which happens a lot in the NFL. Is like all of a sudden we can save. You're on four, and we can go get a rookie for seven hundred, and say your performance slip one year. All of a sudden, that yeah, you know I mean, they'll just they'll take the they'll take the three. Uh, they'll take the yeah, I mean, cut you, and then use that three million elsewhere. So. Um, it's just yeah, being smart with it when it comes to you know in contracts as well. Is that a an NFL thing with guaranteed and unguaranteed contracts? Like, I know in the NBA, it's um a lot of that is written in with guarantees. Yeah, it's yeah, it, a lot of contracts aren't guaranteed. Um, you might get a year or two of your contracts, which are, um, and then guys try and spread that out throughout the entire yeah, you know, I mean throughout the entire year, so at least you have some security to the team, but um. Yeah, I mean, you'll have guys coming into the year where they make, you know, I mean, you might have received them meant to make eight, but none of it's guaranteed. So if they release you before a certain date, that none of it's, you know, I mean, they don't know you were sent. So you can be on the, you're going to be back on the street finding a new team. So um, that's the type, yeah, with the contracts is kind of, you, you, I mean, you look at what the guarantees are on there and then, 
Yeah, you know, I mean, that's the only thing you're really guaranteed at all from it. You're not guaranteed anything else. NFL's a relatively short season, 16 rounds, 17 with a bye. Um, what are you doing with yourself when you're not playing? Uh, just back in Columbus, in Ohio. So back sort of where I went to college. Um, and then just just hanging out, relaxing. We'll try and travel a little bit. Um, but, yeah, it's it, – we kind of – the, the off-season is kind of weird. You start back OTAs in – April, you do eight weeks worth and then you have another six weeks off for like summer and then you roll into training camp. So it's kind of a weird sort of schedule. So you just kind of get your downtime, um, work out, get sort of get your body back on again and uh, get rolling for the next year. What's a, what's working out look like for a punter? A lot of time in the gym? Yeah, you're just trying to build as much, you know, I mean, because everything happens in, you know, I mean, over one to two steps in what, 1.2 seconds. So you're just trying to build as much, expo- like, you not you're not out there running laps of the field. I think mean, I don't know the last time I probably ran a lap of the field for a warm up or any of that, but <laughs> it's more just explode. Yeah. yeah. You see these, yeah, I remember looking at, you look online and, and you see the uh, AFL doing their preseason and they're running, running laps of the tan and all that. I'm like, yeah, that's, <laughs> nah, I couldn't be doing that no more, but yeah, it's more explosive. You're trying to, you know, I mean, quick movements, trying to get it as explosive as possible because, um, yeah, I mean, that's what's going to keep you, keep you around. I think we found why Cam didn't make it in the AFL, Dan. <laughs> the bloke can't run. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you've, you've kicked a yeah. footy? Did you, do you have one over there? Do you, do you take it out for a kick with the guys? Uh, the other day. Um, so the new punter at Ohio State, he's from uh, like Fremantle. He's in WA. Right. Um, so he yeah, he had it out the other day in the in the indoor. So we were uh, we were kicking that around in the indoor. It was it was weird at first. I hadn't I hadn't kicked one for you mean at least a couple of years. So um, but you can get a hold of them. I don't know. The, the margin for error is so much better. It's nice. Is, is is that a thing? Aussies kind of sticking together across the pro circles kind of thing? Is that your connection with Pro Kick or do you just looking out for them? How's that work? I think that's the best thing about Pro Kick is everyone kind of stays in contact with one another. There's a lot of group chats going around, and it's more just when guys are coming over now. If they run into a certain situation, there's yeah, I mean, probably someone's already ran into the exact same one before. If it comes with a class, a coach, something like that, it's because there's so many guys over here now in the college uh, system, and it's just like, hey, you just reach out to a guy, and um, yeah, I mean, they've always been, you know, they've they've probably been through it before, so. Um, which is good. I mean, it's good for the young guys now having people to be able to like, you know, I mean, talk to and, and help their way through it all. Max Duffy, is that who you kick the footy with? Ah, uh, no, Mirko, Jesse Mirko. He's oh, at Jesse uh, he, he's at he's at Ohio State now. He played his uh he played his first season last one. So um, he did. He had a great year as well. He had his like he had his first like snow game was against the rival in Michigan and man, that that looked brutal up there. There was a fair bit of snow, but he did a great job. So. Now, uh, Tyson Beatty, um, I did ask, look, is there anything I should ask Cameron about? And he said a couple of little things. Um, he mentioned about Jesse Merck having a kick. He said he's kicking them quite well, I believe. Um, he also sent me a little uh, excerpt of uh, NFL Goes Nuts over Aussie Cam Johnson being perfect doppelganger for US comedian Bill Burr. <laughs> Yeah, that uh, where did we have? We had one of the games, and I uh, got back to my phone in the locker room afterwards, and that had just blown up. It was uh, <laughs> there was a lot of. <laughs> I think the, the opposing fans have been giving it to me for for years about it, um, but then I think it was Barstool Sports on one of the, the social media places uh, over here got a hold of it, and yeah, that uh, that blew the social media up for a little bit. So you've got to you've got to give it to them. You look exactly like him. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was uh, the, the the road fans said. That's how people like. Have you heard this before? I'm like, every every road game we have, every, every <laughs> single person in the front row is trying to say it. So, um, yeah, I was like, I was kind of shocked. It took that while. It took a while for uh, it to catch on. But yeah, opposing fans when they've had a few, they are uh, they definitely got on board. That do, do you do you do you watch P- Pat McAfee? Do you know who he is? Do you know his love of NFL punters? I assume you do. I assume it's uh, just. Oh, given, yeah. given across the league yeah. that NFL he, punters uh, know who that is. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, I think, I don't know if we had a year that we overlapped in the NFL with, with the Colts, but um, no, he's doing an incredible job with what he's doing now. So, and he was an incredible punter as well. So, um, no, his show, his, his show is good. You always find out what's going on, um, you know, I mean, sort of with what's going on in the league as well. Um, yeah, he, he does a good thing, a good job. Have you been on it? Uh, 
no, we, I think we're going to do try and do something when the the Bill Burr thing went ahead. But um, just to the point in the season with what was going on, I was just yeah, better not just to kind of not to worry about it. Maybe we can reach out there. Maybe yeah. we'll reach out to Pat. Give him a call. I know he's um he, he's got the uh, the golf swing sort of celebration after a good punt. Have you got something that you pull out for people? No, nah, I just get off the field. I just, you know what I mean? <laughs> Do your job, get off. Stay, uh, try and stay under the radar. They can't. That's. I think that's the best thing for special teams. You just stay under the radar. Do your job. Stay consistent. Um, they can kind of forget you're there. So you just keep rolling through year to year. So, um, but no, did you, uh, Max, who was it? Um, Fletcher, Dustin Fletcher's son in the in the the playoff game. He he had a good time. He had the strut and all that going. So he had the uh, Conor McGregor really going. Get into it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. he had the Conor McGregor yeah. on, right? Have you ever had to? Um, yeah, he's uh, he's mad. Kick on. Oh, so has, has he ever had to? Have you ever had to um, fill a spot in another team? Like if they were desperate for numbers, like we just need you to go out there and, and run into a man um, because they were short on on something either in college or or I mean probably not in the no, NFL. Have that many guys. In in, col- in uh, college, they try and get you out there and practice to run routes and stuff like that. I uh, will run in routes as a receiver one time. I tried to take a hanger on one of the uh, <laughs> on one of the DBs, and uh, yeah, I got told I wasn't allowed to do it again. <laughs> I was like, "This is my office." Yeah, the the, the coach uh, the coach he was like, he came, uh, he pulled me, Urban pulled me aside. We're not, he goes, "We're not doing that. You're a punter. Get it? You know, go get over Swing, there." So. Swing cap um, as you do it. Yeah, I thought it was pretty. I thought it was pretty. I thought it was pretty good. I, I, I enjoyed it. I was like, "Hey, this is my opportunity. Let's get up, show him we got something here." But uh, yeah, I got pulled pretty quick. Have you got any tackles in the NFL? Because you got to once you punt the ball, you got to uh, you got to yeah. follow it up. Yeah, I think I got maybe. Three, uh, three, four, somewhere, somewhere in that range. Um, yeah, you're just trying, you're trying to get down as field as fast as possible because these returners are, man, they're lightning. Some at the speed they have, so you're just trying to get down there and get in the hole, and yeah, you know, I mean, trying to either turn them back to the other guys or, yeah, you know, I mean, grab a hole. But no, I mean, some of the returners are ridiculous. You watch like Tyreek Hill and these guys, the speed they have. Um, you just want to try and force as many fair catches as possible, or uh, hope the guys on the outside uh, go make the tackle. So. Coming up to Super Bowl week, uh, we'll let you go in a second, Cam. Really appreciate your time today, mate. Um, who's going to win the Super Bowl? How do you see that going down? Um, you got anyone playing that you know or any friends playing in the game? And who do you think is going to win? Uh, I'm hoping Cincinnati. I, I'm really look. i got probably five guys I went to school with. Joe Burrow was on the team for a couple of years um, as a backup. Uh, Sam Hubbard, Eli Apple, Von Bell. Um so those guys, you know, I really want to see them do it. And then also that just the way they're playing right now to, to hold Kansas City's offense to, what was that, what, 70 yards and uh, know what points in this in that second half last week was crazy. So um, I'm, I think it'll be a shootout as well. Yeah, I mean, you're looking, it's going to be both, you know, I mean, if you're going to win, you're going to have to score a ton of points in this game. So, um, but I think Joe Burrow, the way he's going to roll and, you know, I mean, I think he'll get the job done. Have you been to a Super Bowl? Uh, not as a player, but have, have you been, while well, you've been over there? No, no, I've always wanted to. It's just, uh, yeah, was, we usually get back to Australia, uh, get back to Australia during that time, and then sort of with COVID and stuff like that, it's kind of, kind of, yeah, I mean, not being able to, but yeah, I mean, definitely one day you you definitely want to. I saw the prices of um of the tickets. Do you you must get like some sort of hookup, or are you just left your own devices to spend twenty five k on a ticket? <laughs> Uh, I think you, you can. I think you can. You can. can you can get. Uh, you can pay for a couple through the team. Um, but yeah, at the same time, they're, they're not cheap. They're not cheap so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But no, def, definitely one day try and get to one. So. Do you miss home at all, mate? I know you're heading home uh, in about twenty four hours. Um, we got you before you flew home. Do you miss home at all, or are you happy over there? Oh, I love America. Yeah, you, know, you always want to try and get back. It'll be good to get back, see family, stuff like that. I haven't been back in. Three years, um, but then also I love life over here. I've been here what nine, nine or so years now, so um, it's kind of just got used to it over here now. So, um, but definitely miss the warm weather and stuff like that. With living up in Ohio, with negative fifteen snow, yeah, I mean it can get <laughs> it can kind of get pretty tiring. You you're always stuck indoors. So if you get back to the beach, get back to some more weather, it's going to be incredible. 
Unreal, mate. Well, have a good flight. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, as I'm sure you're very much wondering, Cam, if you want to find us on socials, you can get on there. Backchat, double underscore. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, Reddit. You can find us there somewhere. YouTube. You can find us at backchatpodcast.com.au. You can send us an email, Cam. Hello at backchatpodcast.com.au. Anything else you can do, Dan? Um, just say hi anytime if you see us in the street. That's another thing you I can think do. Cam Johnson is well up there with uh, friends of the family of Backchat now. We'll be covering his career for a very long period of time. Mate, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Perfect. Thanks so much for having me on.